installation Sunday when we're going to install our our uh, our board members with our elders and our deacons, our junior deacons, our trustees, and the congregation. So so glad that y'all could be here and be a part of this um, historic day in the life of TLCC in the new year 2021. Uh, a few news and notes that you'll find uh, in your bulletin as well as on the screen today. And so we have in the life of our church, and we have different things that are happening uh, during the week. And so you might want to pay attention to those items and see what's happening. On Monday night at 7 o'clock, on Monday night at 7 o'clock, uh, we are doing TLCC Talk Time. And so you can zoom in uh, and we'll uh, see each other face to face and, and have some conversation together. So we're going to try that and, and see, um, you know, how we can touch base with one another. And so, you know, uh, feel free to, to join us for that. Now, earlier in the day on Monday morning, you know, you might want to join us because we have uh, Monday through Thursday, we have walkabout. And so come join Jane and Gail and sometimes Ralph joins us uh, and myself as we walk our way to better help in the new year. And that's Monday through Thursday, and that's 9.30 to 10. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, we have our elders meeting at 6 o'clock and the board meeting at 7 o'clock, and that will all be via Zoom. Um, and so be a part of uh, those uh, different uh, meetings with regard to the life of the church uh, because you'll want to know what's going on. So the church board meeting is on Tuesday. Uh, at 7 p.m. Um, other things that you might need to know is the uh, Christian Men's Fellowship meeting is on Thursday via Zoom at 7 o'clock. And so join in and uh, and be with the men of TLCC as they have Bible study and conversation and fellowship uh, via technology. Uh, the Cairo uh, have a retreat coming up in February, but registration for that event is due this coming week, I think, um, and so you need to make sure that uh, young people, if you are between the 6th grade, 7th grade, and 8th grade, you need to contact Ms. Jennifer Cloy. She has all the details uh, with regard to the Cairo Retreat. Super Bowl of Caring, don't forget, excuse me, to bring your cans of soup and non-perishable items. We're doing better. We have, oh, we might have maybe 12 things in the box this week already. So uh, we have a few more weeks to do this. So make sure that when you go to the grocery store, throw in a few things for the ICM uh, food pantry uh, because that is where we're going to donate our items uh, for the Super Bowl of Caring. If you have a talent or a gift in singing or playing a musical instrument, we would like you to think about enhancing our worship by using your musical talents and skills and gifts. So contact Andy Cloyd. He is our new worship chair for 2021. Or you can contact Mike Tuber. You know, he'll be glad to, to um, work with you and, uh, and use your talents and gifts to enhance our worship. And so those are some things that we wanted to share with you uh, for this week at TLCC. Thank you. 
something I need to share with you that once again, we have not changed the candles. Uh, so if at any point in time during the worship service the candles go out, just know that we are still in the presence of God and that our <laughs> prayers go up um, and our worship goes up to our God. So just be mindful of that and yes, we ordered candles. But we are indeed glad that you are here and that we can worship in the presence of God this day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. Let us worship our God this day. I invite you to stand and join me. And here I am, Lord. <laughs>
the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of the ministry and the life of Scripture. In the bonds of the Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God, that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessing, glory, and honor be to God forever and ever. Please answer, with God's help I do. 
With God's help, I do. We would ask for any and all who serve as junior deacons to please stand. These are the youth who have answered the call to serving Christ. Bailey Floyd, Skyler Floyd, Grace Kine, Hannah Kine, and Zachary Kine. You are faithful in your church by your attendance and by your leadership in church youth activities as well as in worship. You are the future of the church in serving roles of youth leadership today. So junior deacons, do you accept the position of church leadership to which you have been called? If so, please answer, with God's help, I do. With God's help, I do. We would ask for any and all who serve as trustees to stand. We have John Dolan, Tracy Calhoun, and Jackie Oliver. And John Dolan is our newest trustee. The trustees serve faithfully to represent the will of the church in all its legal matters. We entrust them to manage the property, equipments, and investments that God has entrusted to our ministry here at TLCC. Trustees, do you accept the position of church leadership to which you have been called? If so, please answer with God's help, I do. With God's help, I do. Thank you. Congregation, family of faith, koinonia believers, will you pledge your eager support to the work of God in this congregation under the leadership of these people with whom you share ministry in the body of Christ, known as TLCC, and pray God's blessing as we seek to support one another in selfless service. If so, please answer, with God's help, we do. With God's help, we do. Let us pray. Almighty God, we rejoice that you have called us to be your people in this time and in this place. Help us to fulfill the mission to which you call us and know what faithfulness requires of us. Fill this congregation with your loving spirit that each may work together harmoniously so that all members may work together for the common good and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and by the authority of this congregation as your senior minister, I declare you properly installed for the terms to which you have been called. May grace and peace be yours in the abundance of God and of Jesus our Lord. I would invite you to join me in making me a servant, a chorus dedicated to those who were just mentioned. We'll do it twice through. <laughs>
that uh, you need to know about who's not on the prayer list but needs to be in your prayers and, and your thoughts and in your heart is uh, Billy Lewis. Uh, that Billy Lewis has been placed in hospice care. Um, and so, um, you know, Billy suffered from a stroke about three years ago, this coming March. Um, and so she has been working through physical therapy and trying to, to get back into the swing of things. And that um, uh, just recently has taken a turn for the worse. Um, and so please keep her in your prayers along with son Michael um, as hospice care has been called to the house. We take time to lift up our cares and concerns to our God in prayer this day, in this place, at this time. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, creator of the universe and giver of all good and perfect gifts. You are great and greatly to be praised. We are thankful for your presence in our lives. We thank you that you are always with us and that you have not forgotten us, nor abandoned us, nor rejected us, despite how we act. Help us to do a better job of showing kindness and care towards all, as we are to be imitators of Christ Jesus in word and deed. We bring you all that troubles us, our mistakes, our sins, our sorrows, and our cares, our rebellion and our bitterness. Take us as we are, O oh God. Strengthen us when we are weak and help us to be more responsible as the hands and feet of Christ. May your loving kindness shine upon us and all whom we love. Be with those who are suffering, those who are ill, those who have recently experienced grief and loss. May they be comforted by your healing, holy presence. Some, O oh God, are struggling with painful family problems. Some are faced with financial concerns. Some have spiritual needs. We are assured of your love and your grace for all. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Gracious God, during this COVID pandemic, we lift up all the first responders who continue to serve humanity, working tirelessly in this effort of crisis, protecting and providing for and to the needs of others. Relieve the anxiety they feel as they respond to the care for others. Uphold them and strengthen them. Watch over them and their well-being, we pray. Hear our prayers, O oh God. O oh God, in a country that seems to have lost its way, we come to you not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people you have called us to be, people who seek justice and peace through your love for all people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that seem to have no easy solutions. We seem to be a nation of deeply divided people. You are our hope, O oh God. And it is in this hope that we live and move and have our being. Help us find our way to peace. And may we be the change agents in the world. May we learn to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Let your peace become primary among the leaders of our country and the world. Give us all wisdom and insight to become instruments of your love and peace. Lord, hear our prayers. creating us the spirit of humility and grace. We offer ourselves to you in the same spirit in which you have offered yourself to us. We thank you and pray for this church and those who lead us. Continue to give them insight, wisdom, and courage. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our men and women in uniform and for their safe return. We are grateful for their sacrifice of service and pray for your presence and safeguarding in their lives. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
website, or you can place your offerings in the box of the Marplex. We'll not pass the offering plate, but we will have the opportunity for a special musical offering by now.
Verily, truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, 2020 is now hindsight. For the first time in history books. But 2021 holds lots of questions and far more opportunities. There may be dark periods, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. God will be with us as we creep toward that light, and it will be a new beginning. And besides COVID-2020 was irritating because of the massive political ads and phone solicitations. And do you like cold calls, you know, uh, where the unknown number is there and this wonderful voice offers you this fantastic opportunity? Everybody likes that, yes? Oh, sorry. Uh, well, wait, wait, wait. What about uh, robocalls? You know, the, the recorded message? Nobody likes those either? Hmm. Well, what about the knock on the door from the over-friendly door-to-door salesperson? Nobody likes those either? Hmm. Me neither. But you would like to call them family or friends, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess I'd like to talk to them. But maybe not in the middle of the night. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm, I'm preaching right now. I'm talking. I, I understand. Yes, I am listening. If you say so. Yes, I will obey. Did God ever call you that way? When you least expect it, you try to bargain. How do you deal with it? Well, God has been telling me he wanted a second scripture added to today's lesson. First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 10 verses. Well, I tried to tell him I was preaching on John 1, 43 to 51, and he said, do both. <laughs> so buckle your seatbelts, here we go with a double barrel sermon. serve the Lord in gratitude for her being granted a son. Eli's own sons were in disfavor with God because of their misbehavior and disregard for the holiness of the temple. But Samuel served Eli and remained true to God, although he did not yet know the Lord himself. Recognition of God's word was very, very rare in those days because the people and their leaders had drifted away. So what was about to happen was very unusual. And in chapter 3, we're told that it was still night because the lamp of God, was, which was kept burning all night long in the Holy of Holies in the traveling temple, had not gone out. Samuel was sleeping near the entrance to the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant is kept in the temple at Shiloh. He hears a voice, Samuel, Samuel! and assumes it is Eli. So he goes to Eli, who says, I'm Eli, go back to bed. Ah, okay. Samuel, Samuel, he hears a second time, and he goes to Eli, who sends him back to bed again. Third call, Samuel, Samuel, brings him back to Eli, who this time figures out the Lord is calling and instructs Samuel to answer. He had called again. And sure enough, Samuel, Samuel! Following Eli's instructions, Samuel answers, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Well, the message from God that follows uh, dealt with God's intention to punish Eli's house and his sons. And Eli accepts that when Samuel reveals it to him. Samuel becomes a very important leader of, Israel, of the Israelites. He replaces Eli and becomes the prophet, priest, judge, the last Israelite judge. Samuel does not want the Israelites to choose a king, but when God accedes to the request of the people, Samuel 
a noise. Saul, a Saul was quite popular, but he becomes self-important and does not follow God. Samuel, as God's messenger, confronts Saul with God's message that he is no longer king. You're out there. <laughs> but Saul refuses Samuel and flees for his life. Never see Saul again. Then Samuel is sent to Bethlehem so God can reveal which of Jesse's sons is to become king. Seven sons are rejected, but the youngest, David, the shepherd boy, who plays the lyre. He is anointed. And as we know, he's taken into Saul's court to play for Saul who cannot sleep. Further, David is present when Saul does battle with the Philistines, and the young shepherd boy slays the giant, the Philistine champion, champion Goliath. Eventually, David becomes king of the united Israel, but he too disobeyed God and was punished. But he did become God's favorite king after he repented. And from David's lineage comes Jesus, the incarnation of God. So, what would have happened if God had not persisted in calling? Samuel, Samuel. But God continued to call, and Samuel did answer. You know, one evening, uh, when my two oldest boys were still in grade school, I was in my home office uh, doing a lot of work, and the boys just kept going by the door and looking in, going by the door and looking in, going by the door and looking in. And finally I stopped and I said, hey, uh, why are you be so curious? So what's going on here? And uh, the oldest says, uh, well, what are you doing, Dad? I replied, well, Reverend Woodard was going on vacation, and I'm writing a sermon to fill in for him. Well, how do you know what to write? Mike, my second son, asked. Uh, well, or, uh, hmm, uh, mm, uh, God tells me. I finally blurted it out. Then why are you crumpling the pages and tossing them in the I had not been listening, had I? <laughs> Let's explore uh, with Philip a little now. He was most probably a disciple of John the Baptist and was present when the Baptist pointed out Jesus as the Lamb of God. So Jesus, in person, needed only to say, follow me. And Philip left his old life and began a new life. Immediately, Philip brought Nathaniel, who also called Bartholomew, to Jesus which allowed Jesus to display his foreknowledge of all things. Philip was most likely uh, present at Jesus' first miracle when water was turned into wine at the wedding in Cana. Philip was highly intelligent. When challenged by Jesus to feed the 5,000, Philip quickly calculated the amount of food that would be needed, an enormous amount, and it would cost so much. Yet he knew miracles of the Son of Man. So he's not surprised when five loaves and two fishes were more than enough. Philip is a Greek name, which gave him entry to advise Andrew that Greeks wished to be introduced to Jesus, thus extending the word of the Lord to all people of all lands. And at the Last Supper, Philip was the boy that asked to be shown the Father so Jesus could teach his disciples about the unity of the Father and the Son. <clears throat> Philip himself sought the path to salvation through redemption by John the Baptist. This led him to Jesus Christ and eternal life through the blood of the Lamb. Philip, like the other apostles, spread Christianity to distant lands. He was the second apostle to be martyred after James. However, Philip, by following this call, allowed Jesus to display foreknowledge, miracles, spreading the word to all people, and the unity of the Trinity. Again, what happened would happen, or might have happened, if Philip had not answered the simple call, follow me. But Philip did answer. God chooses his leaders from his people and calls them to serve. Do they hear? Do they readily accept? Well, it, it doesn't matter because God continues to call and call and call and call. 
until his chosen leader answered. Sometimes a velvet hammer is needed or a supporting voice, but God always finds a way to get through to his chosen ones. And Jesus did the same. Recall the way each of the disciples was called. Not even one of them ever thought himself destined to be a disciple. But when called, they answered. And Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus, that was definitely a call from the Lord. So, <clears throat> what is the purpose of this call? In Isaiah 43, God says, I have called you by name, you are mine. Well, that's pretty direct. God calls. You better answer it because you are His. So, what is the purpose of this call? Well, it is God's call, so the purpose must be to serve Him. <clears throat> what does God do? What do you want the chosen one to do? Serve God's people. How should they serve? <clears throat> well, in some leadership role or function, and according to Paul in Romans 12, depending upon their gifts. However, the leader has no function if there are no people to lead. Can these chosen leaders lead effectively? Only if they have the support and the cooperation of the people they are leading. It turns out to be a partnership. <clears throat> I remember the calls I received. The first was when I answered the call to accept Jesus is my Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and the next was when I was placed in the pulpit for the first time. Followed by sending me on a mission trip and teaching fourth grade Sunday school. And there was a call to be a church officer for the first time. And another call came when I entered seminary to become commissioned. And later, a chapel. Now that took the three calls to get me where he wanted me. <laughs> and just a few minutes ago, we installed our new board members. They're joining the other members. These are the officers of our church. And we are the ones that they will lead, and we get to do the work for them. Tuesday, the board will meet to elect officers for 2021. The board members said, I have answered the call to serve. They will fill the duties according to their individual talents. We, the congregation, are obliged to support them. Our responsibility is to serve as requested by our leaders. So be prepared to serve when asked. Oh, but wait, don't wait, don't wait to be asked. Call an offer to serve on one of the committees. You got the list today. Our church officers will return to being followers at the end of their respective terms. After their service, they will be better prepared to support those who lead. The hallmark is service to God, and it never ceases. <clears throat> Compare this to most other organizations. A person rises through the offices and positions, eventually becomes the chief leader with a fancy title, maybe chairman or executive or head honcho. After their term, and they become the junior past head honcho, during which time they are occasionally praised for the job they did while they were presiding. Then they are simply past honchos, and they join the other past honchos, who sit together as a committee of gurus, and who are not consulted unless there's a crisis, in which case they say, that didn't happen on my watch, you better fix it. <laughs> Fortunately, we in this church have a completely different situation. The congregation knows the board only guides the work of the church and that they cannot function without the support of the congregation. What makes this work is communication. Communication within the community of believers. The standard bearers host the banner of God and the church proceeds. And when the standard bearers get a little tired, the congregation supports them so the work of the church can continue. Who is the true leader? Jesus is the true leader. What is his banner? The cross is his banner. The hand of Jesus never weakens. His banner never wavers. His promise 
is secure. We, his followers, alternate positions of leadership in the work of the church when called. His church, his body, cannot function without the community, the fellowship, and the service of all his disciples. When he calls us by name, let us say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. When he says, Follow me, let's get up and follow him into the world. And when he asks, Whom shall I send? Let us reply, Here I am, Lord. Amen. Savior is with you even to the ends of the earth. Amen.